12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good Tuesday morning, everyone. We have a lot to get to on Good Morning San Antonio, starting with an update on a one-year-old who was attacked by dogs yesterday. We have learned that the baby has died. What we now know about this attack and the pet owner that's being charged in this case. Also, a deadly night on the highway. How a fiery crash on I-35 near O'Connor Road ended with a driver dead. Plus, Hurricane Milton continues to turn towards Florida with winds reaching 150 miles per hour. And officials aren't kidding around when they're saying it's time to evacuate. If you choose to stay in one of those evacuation areas, you're going to die. We'll tell you when and how strong it will be when it makes landfall this week. All right, good morning to everyone out there again. It is Tuesday, October 8th, and Jaffney already a very busy morning for us here in the case at 12 newsroom. Very, very busy on this Tuesday. But first, before we get into all of that action, let's get in with me and Montgomery. She's here with us. Thank you so much for joining us with these mm -hmm. cooler temperatures. Good yeah. morning. Yes, morning's morning. not too bad over the next several days, but we are still going to be dealing with record heat, at least record challenging heat into the afternoons. But I want to get you a look at current conditions outside waking up this Tuesday again not too bad in the 60s for many locations. 68 degrees right now here in the Alamo City. Just a degree cooler over there in New Braunfels up by 35. Low 60s though for places like Bernie and Kerrville as you get up into the hill country with mostly clear skies in place. By the way, plenty of sunshine is going to be found from start to finish today. We're already going to be nearing the 90 degree mark for any lunchtime plans that you have around noon. A high temperature slated for the mid 90s right around 95 in San Antonio if that verifies, it will tie the existing record high for the day. So still not feeling like October and 90s are going to continue for the foreseeable future, but at least we will start to see some cooler mornings return to San Antonio starting tomorrow. Low to mid 60s back in the forecast. More on that in just a second. Again, a quick look at Hurricane Milton. This continues to be the big story of the day when it comes to national news and weather, the center of which now passing near the northern coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula. As of the 4 a.m. update, this is a power Powerful category 4 hurricane with winds sustained at 155 miles per hour. It is going to continue to work its way farther up to the northeast. Landfall still slated near the Tampa Bay area late Wednesday and into early Thursday. We'll have a full check at that forecast track plus your seven day forecast here at home coming up a little bit later on. All right, thank you for that update, Mia. And I uh, want to give you an update here on a major crash that we had overnight. So 35 northbound at O'Connor Road had been shut down for hours after a crash involving an 18-wheeler. We're going to show you some video in just a little bit, but want to give you the current situation out there. All the main lanes of 35 have reopened. Uh, they, reopened they reopened around 435 this morning as you take a look there at 35 and Thousand Oaks. But this crash affecting all of our traffic there in the northeast side of town, basically from Topperwine, O'Connor, all the way down to Wiedner and thousand oh so let's go ahead and show you some video here that we got overnight san antonio police saying that a driver is dead after he crashed into the back of that 18 wheeler along 35 late last night so again this happening at the intersection of i-35 and o'connor road and that of course is near all that construction that we're seeing on the northeast side of town just take a look at uh, this fiery video right there police say that when the driver of that pickup truck crashed into the back of the 18 wheeler the pickup got pinned under the trailer and unfortunately caught fire. Police say that the man inside died at the scene and it took firefighters over an hour to get that gas fueled fire out. There were no other injuries reported and again 35 has reopened since. New this morning to a very tragic story. The Bear County Medical Examiner has identified a one year old baby boy who was dead following a dog attack in Converse. That's right. Our Devin Carp is live at University Hospital this morning with new developments that happened overnight. Good morning, Devin. RJ and Jaffney, the Bear County Medical Examiner, has now identified that one-year-old as Jariah Johnson. Now, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar said that 36-year-old Heather Rodriguez was in charge of babysitting Johnson inside her home when the dogs attacked. Now, right now, at last check, Rodriguez was charged with injury to a child. It's unclear whether or not that charge will be upgraded. Deputies say at some point she left the home and her own 13-year-old in charge. Now, during that time, deputies say the dogs forced their way 
way into the room the child was in and attacked the baby for an unknown reason. The sheriff's office says the teen tried her best to protect the baby, but we're told there was a struggle given that the dogs were XL bullies, a pit bull mix. That's a very strong dog. Sheriff Javier Salazar says Rodriguez is in custody, but not cooperating with detectives. It was almost a tug of war for the baby between at least one of the dogs and the little girl. Sheriff Javier Salazar did not know for what reason or for how long Rodriguez left the home. He adds that this isn't the deputy's first visit to Rodriguez's home. Back in April, the sheriff says that these dogs were barking and growling at another neighbor, preventing him from being able to leave his car. At the time, she was cited for not having her dogs on leashes. Now, coming up at 5.30, what Animal Care Services is saying about people who have concerns about dangerous dogs in their neighborhood. For now, RJ and Jaffney, I'm Devin Karp, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, tragic outcome there. Thank you, Devin. Now to some late breaking news, a shooting on San Antonio's west side. Mm -hmm. uh, Patty Santos is live right now in the 9800 block of West Over Hills Boulevard. You see it right there. Patty, what do we know so far? Hey there, this is still a pretty active scene. This happened a couple of hours ago, but you could see officers are still working inside the garage right behind me. We want to show you a map of where this is located. This is West Over Hills. This is near 151 Highway 151. And here's what police are telling us. They say this all started when a property owner, a resident here of the Overlook at West Over Hills condos, uh, spotted someone near their vehicle. They came out with an assault rifle. This is the homeowner now and started shooting at those suspects at the suspect. It eventually police got here a few a little while later. They got a call of someone showing up nearby at a nearby hospital with a gunshot wound an injury. So at this point, police are still trying to figure out if that uh, suspect that showed up to the hospital is connected to the shooting that happened here. We did see uh, crime scene investigators taking away some some evidence from the scene here. But at this point, this is what we know. Uh, we're going to tr hopefully try to get more updates from you here as police wrap up this investigation. We'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Patty. Well, later this morning, the murder trial resumes for a former John Jay High School student. Jesus San Miguel is accused of stabbing his friend and classmate last spring during a lunch break. During the first day of testimony, it was revealed that the victim in this case, Joshua Kinneman, initiated a fight with San Miguel over something that he told his girlfriend. The fight ended with Kinneman getting stabbed and dying from his injuries. The defense in this case told the jury during opening arguments that San Miguel was only defending himself. He doesn't rush at him and stab him. He doesn't stab him multiple times. He's standing there with his knife in his hand trying to de-escalate. He just has the knife. The guy runs into the knife, basically. Well, the state said during their opening statements that San Miguel knew that what he was doing and can be seen in surveillance footage, taking his knife out of his pocket and that then he fled after the scene and never called 911. If found guilty, San Miguel faces up to life in prison. The National Hurricane Center says that Milton is a Category 4 storm right now, but is expected to strengthen into a powerful Category 5 storm with 180 miles per hour winds. Milton is expected to create a storm surge that could be devastating and leave the region with unprecedented damage. The storm is expected to make landfall tomorrow, just weeks after Hurricane Helene caused widespread destruction. The National Hurricane Center says that Milton has 180 mile per hour winds. Helene was a wake up call. Uh, this is literally catastrophic. And I can say without any dramatization whatsoever, if you choose to stay in one of those evacuation areas, you're going to die. Thousands of people seem to be heeding that warning. Highways leading out of the area were jammed most of the day yesterday as people drive north to try to get out of harm's way. I think that was something that Mia was talking about earlier with saying that there was nothing but red brake lights throughout trying to get people to safety. Yeah, I saw some of the video there from ABC News and yeah, those uh, highways are jam packed. But of course, people, you know, taking notice of those warnings there. Mm -hmm. And I think the mayor made it very clear that uh, they do anticipate uh, some pretty severe flooding out there. Yes. OK, right now it's 509. We got 68 degrees outside. All right. It's already been a busy Tuesday morning coming up. Cancer is the top cause of death for Latinos. We're going to tell you about a panel of experts who are finding out why that's happening and how a new cancer facility here in San Antonio 
will help patients. And I know the day has gone out heavy with some news, but we do have some lighter news for you. Check this out. Amazon deal days are back again. We'll tell you what you can save on the most today and tomorrow. All right. And if you are taking a look outside right now with live cam, we're starting things off a little cool in the morning, so we like that. Fortunately, uh, things are going to get a little bit warmer later. Mia is in for Justin today, Woo -woo. tracking the latest out there on the Gulf Coast, and it's going to give us our updates here throughout the rest of the day. Morning, Mia. 513, welcome back to GMSA. Vice President Kamala Harris was pressed on issues including the Middle East, Ukraine, and the economy during a one-on-one -on -one interview with 60 Minutes. During that interview on CBS, Harris promised to follow through with tax breaks for first-time home buyers and small business owners. Meanwhile, former President Trump, while hosting Jewish community leaders in Miami, blamed Hamas. Hamas's attack on the current administration, saying that he's going to remove the Jew haters who do nothing to help our country, end quotes, if elected. Trump is also critical of the Biden administration's response to Hurricane Helene. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court is hearing a challenge to a Biden administration regulation on ghost guns. The case is centered on gun kits that are sold online and can be assembled into a functioning weapon in less than 30 minutes. The Biden administration's regulation requires background checks, age verification, and serial numbers. The number of ghost guns has since flattened out or declined in several major cities. Manufacturers and gun rights groups challenged the rule, arguing that the administration overstepped its authority. All right, a scary thought right here. Cancer is the top cause of death for Latinos. Researchers from the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio also say that Latinos could face a 142% increase in cancer cases. In coming years in South Texas, Latinos face higher rates of cervical, stomach, and liver cancers compared to Latinos in other parts of the state. Later today at 2 p.m., our Stefania Jimenez will visit with a panel of experts to find out why that's happening and how a new cancer facility in San Antonio will help patients. Revolutionizing cancer care for South Texas, a new era of treatment. It starts at 2 p.m. on KSAT.com. And looking ahead, celebrate, honor, and remember people impacted by blood cancer. Please join us at Hemisphere Park on October 19th for Light the Night. Yes, this event uh, takes place where hundreds of lanterns will illuminate the sky with hope and honor. Case that reporter, you see her right there, Daniela Ibarra, will MC the opening ceremonies out there yeah. at Hemisphere Park. And we're going to have a team out there being mm -hmm. taking part in this as well. So come out, make sure to hang out with us, and also be out there for a good cause. Yes, be there for a great cause. I'll be there. Yes. For the first right. time, hey, there you probably teary-eyed and yes, everything. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, time now is 5.15, 68 degrees outside. Amazon Prime Big Deals days are back for 48 hours this week. But it's not the only big retailer offering those deals right now. All right, love to see some good deals here. Mm -hmm. Okay, taking a look at some of our TransGuy traffic cameras. Things are looking pretty good across the city of San Antonio. Again, we have cleared out that major 18-wheeler crash on 35 at northbound northeast side. So everything else is looking pretty good. We'll check in more on the traffic and, of course, weather coming up after the break. 518, welcome back. Well, starting today, Amazon's Prime Big Day deals are back for 48 hours this week. Shoppers will have a chance to save on their holiday shopping if you want to go ahead and take care of some of that today and tomorrow. Items included in the deal days include everything from electronics to clothes to toys. Walmart is also offering deals on its app as well, but those deals are running through Sunday. I'm going to get a trade meal. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a legal defeat for Google. A judge has ordered the company to make it easier for app store developers to complete and compete, excuse me, with Google's Play stores on devices using Android software. The Fortnite maker accused Google of anti-competitive -com practices. Google plans to appeal the ruling. All right, Jeff, you're trying to you're trying to get, improve yourself out uh, here. Yeah, it, you know, it's always. Can I'm use, out there looking just like, let me get some air bullets. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can always use some improvements. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at our trans guide right now. We got Loop 1604 and Mountain Vista Drive. Things are looking good right there on that particular camera. Loop 1604 and Lookout Road. Look out! 
you're looking beautiful as well. Only thing on TxDOT right now, we do have a construction zone happening at I-10 and Woodlawn. That's normal. Got one lane blocked at that time, so keep that in mind. And there is also a disabled vehicle. I'm assuming that's a stalled vehicle right mm -hmm. there. Um, they only got a shoulder blocked that is on uh, I-35 in New Braunfels. So just keep that in mind if you're yeah. on your commute. Don't yeah. worry about it. You know, people being backed up or causing yeah, unnecessary Yeah, we saw there that accidents. camera at O'Connor. Things have cleared out there, so that's good news for all of our drivers about to step outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're not yeah. seeing anything like we've seen out there in Florida, those, yeah. I mean, those backed Nothing up Nothing like it's that. Crazy. And yeah. it is very important to mention Ooh. that we are not going to see any impacts from Milton here in Texas. This is moving east through the Gulf of Mexico, so this is moving away from the Lone Star State. But I mean, just yeah. look at yeah. those brake lights. Mm -hmm. This is a live look from Tampa, and you can see uh, the good news is that a lot of people are heating those warnings, yeah. and they are getting out of there, and they are evacuating because, yes, Milton is going to be a very dangerous and powerful storm by the time it reaches the Sunshine State. So once again, I want to get you the latest on Milton. This is as of the 4 a.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. Milton was a Category 5 storm late last night. It has weakened ever so slightly, but still a very high-end Category 4 hurricane. Winds are sustained at 155 miles per hour. It's moving to the east-northeast at 12 miles per hour. Right now, the center of that storm is just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. It could potentially and briefly re-strengthen into that Category 5 classification this afternoon before working its way farther up to the northeast. Right now, it is still expected to weaken slightly before making landfall near the Tampa Bay area late tomorrow night and into early Thursday. But still, it is expected to be a major Category 3 hurricane by the time it does make landfall along Florida's Gulf Coastline. Then it tracks across the peninsula and then out into the western Atlantic by late Wednesday or late Thursday, I should say, and into early Friday. So, of course, high winds, storm surge, all very real concerns for parts of the Sunshine State. Here's the latest projected peak storm surge from the National Weather Service from Spring Hill down to Tampa, 5 to 10 feet. Tampa down to the Fort Myers area, 10 to 15 feet of storm surge above ground level is looking to be a possibility. And then on top of that, you just have flooding concerns from the additional rain that is expected to come out of Milton. Rainfall totals upwards of 5 to 10 inches will be possible across parts of Florida. Localized pockets of 15 plus inches of rain also certain, certainly looking to be a possibility. And that is on top of what parts of the state saw from Helene that also made landfall near the Florida Panhandle almost two weeks ago. So we'll continue to keep you posted on that throughout the remainder of the day and especially into tomorrow as it nears the Florida coastline. But back here at home in San Antonio and across the vast majority of the state of Texas, we are expecting the exact opposite. Unfortunately, we don't have any rain chances in the forecast over the next seven days. It's still going to be hot into the afternoons, but at least mornings will be pleasant looking ahead. Right now we're sitting at 68 degrees here in San Antonio. Once the sun comes up this morning, we will see plenty of it throughout the day. 88 degrees expected around noon, 95 degrees, the forecast high temperature here in San Antonio. And I do think most areas will be able to reach for the low to mid 90s, 96 in Floresville, 95 over in Sabinal, 91, the forecast high temperature later on this afternoon up in Kerrville. More record challenging warmth expected tomorrow, but you'll notice lower humidity looks to work in <laughs> yet again. You know what that means. Yes, still hotter than average into the afternoons, but those morning temperatures are looking pretty nice mm -hmm. in the low to mid 60s. That is awesome. Lower humidity is always helpful. Always, yes. Uh, <laughs> I was out and about yesterday around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, immediately regretted it. Yeah. But you know what? Did you throw up? <laughs> At least we have this a little bit, yes. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> oh the my hair doesn't move that much, though. So. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> it is 523 right now, guys. We got 68 degrees outside. All right, Spurs tipping things off here. It was not, it was that Chris Paul? He looked like he was a sleep there. Yeah. The well, this was not the ending that the Spurs wanted for their first preseason game of the season. We're going to go ahead and hear from Coach Pop, the other players, about how they plan to fix things up before they face the Orlando Magic tomorrow. Welcome back, 526. Last night, San Antonio Spurs opened their preseason schedule against OKC inside Frost Bank Center. Chris Paul, Victor Wimbyama. 
among the six Spurs who didn't suit up yesterday, but there is word that Wimby might play tomorrow. That's right. Yes, uh, Coach Pop basically giving us that indication after he spoke to some of the media. But let's show you some of the highlights here. Former NBA champion Harrison Barnes making his Spurs debut first quarter early on. Barnes with a give and go. We saw Julian Champagne hit that wide open corner three. All right, that's Stephon Castle dunk. Get to that one here in just a bit. But again, six three pointers made by Champagne. Second half, we have. Stephon Castle. We just saw that major throwdown with authority right there for the Spurs. And the Spurs take care of business. Oh, no, they don't. They actually lost this one. My bad. <laughs> 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 112. You know what? Stephon Castle took care of business on that dunk. 112 to 107. <laughs> Julian Champagne led the Spurs with 22 points. Sandro Mamushkavuli had a great game. Yes, Mamu Jeff. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Y'all should have said Mamushkavuli. Okay. Woof. <laughs> they call him Mamu. All right. Here's what the guys had to say after the game one preseason down four to go a big difference between the first and the second I thought we were very uh, uh, we weren't very physical uh, we kind of followed them around I thought they were more aggressive uh, their physicality was better in the first half and we changed that in the second half the first half it was kind of like you haven't played in a long time you're trying to figure out a lot of guys go in their legs are a little heavier um, you know, Pop got mad, so that also changes a lot of stuff. So in the second half, you know, we came out there and played more physical. Playing more physical, the offensive end of the floor would take care of itself. Um, obviously, we have guys who didn't play today who are big offensive scorers, so that'll take care of itself. We'll, we'll get in the rhythm with that. Mama Sonludi. Okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> the Spurs will aim. Season. This Spurs will aim to bring the physicality when Orlando comes to town. It'll be another 7 o'clock tip-off tomorrow night, man. Mm -hmm. names, boy. Yes, I mean, Mamu for short. Okay, Mamu. Yeah, I can so say that all Mamu, day. So obviously, Manu, this is Mamu. But uh, you know what? Anytime we get to say Sandro Mamushkavili. You, you say it beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time now, 529 and 68 degrees outside. All right, switching gears, man. Mm -hmm. Dog attacks have been a growing concern in our area. We'll show you what Animal Care Services is saying about preventing those attacks and holding pet owners accountable. All right, plus what is next in the saga of trying to build a new San Antonio Missions baseball stadium out there in the downtown area? We'll explain the latest out there. Welcome back. A one-year-old boy is killed in a dog attack. How Animal Care Services is responding to the growing concern of attacks in our area. Neighbors are sounding off about a missions baseball stadium downtown. What's next in the process of making the new stadium a reality? Plus, the Mega Millions lottery jackpot is changing the rules a little bit. Why you could soon see a little bit more, even if you don't hit all those matching numbers. Mm, good morning. Yes. That sounds like some great news. It is. Yeah. <laughs> all right, it is. We all need a little bit extra cash here and there. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Especially at 532 in the morning. We can all use that. <laughs> we certainly could. Yeah. And it's not too bad out there to kickstart this Tuesday. Ah, We've okay, managed yes. to fall into the upper 60s mm -hmm. here in San Antonio. And the good news is, if you're hoping for more of that fall-like mm -hmm. feel, at least in the mornings, we do have some cooler low temperatures that are headed our direction for the rest of the week. It's still going to be hot into the okay. afternoons, okay. though. I do need to mention that. Uh, but right now, take a look at good morning temperatures across South Central Texas. 68 degrees here in San Antonio. It's 60 over in Kerrville, 66 in Rock Springs. Good morning to you in Del Rio. Checking in at 68 as well over there in Southern Valverde County. We are going to see plenty of sunshine throughout the day this Tuesday, helping high temperatures once again climb into the unseasonably hot category. Low to mid 90s for many locations, potentially some upper 90s across our far southwestern counties. The forecast higher on 97 in Catula, 97 as well in Carrizo Springs. By the way, if this forecast high of 95 verifies here in the Alamo City, that will actually tie the existing record high for the day. So record challenging warmth, not just this afternoon, but into tomorrow as well as 90s continue for the foreseeable future. But the good news is with another dose of lower humidity working back in, mornings will trend cooler, low to mid 60s in the forecast as early as tomorrow and all the way into the upcoming weekend as well. We'll have the latest details on that. Plus, Milton, a major hurricane in the south central Gulf of Mexico this morning, not headed towards us, but it is headed towards Florida, likely making landfall late tomorrow. We're going to have the latest details on that coming up a little bit later on, guys. Yeah, we've already seen some of the visuals out there of the evacuation routes. Uh, definitely 
a major evacuation taking place there. All right, back here at home, 281 Hildebrand traffic looking pretty good. I-10 Foster Road for all of our folks out there in the east side of town. Traffic looking pretty good and 37410 southeast side. No major incidents to let you know about right now. Only thing that TxDOT is reporting is going to be I-35 North at New Braunfels Avenue. That's going to be kind of right there on the east side of town, east of downtown. But it's a stalled vehicle there. Again, 35 northbound O'Connor Road had a major crash there overnight, and uh, that has been cleared out. Uh, so we are smooth sailing across the rest of the city of San Antonio. Jeff. New this morning, the Bear County Medical Examiner has identified a one-year-old baby boy who was dead following a dog attack. Yeah, a tragic outcome here. Our Devin Carp is live at University Hospital this morning with those new developments that happened overnight. Yeah, RJ and Jaffney, we know that the one-year-old has been identified by the Bear County Sheriff's Office as Jariah Johnson. Now, Sheriff Salazar says that 36-year-old Heather Rodriguez was in charge of babysitting Johnson inside of her home when the dogs attacked the baby. At last check, Rodriguez was charged with injury to a child. It's unclear right now on whether that charge will be upgraded. Deputies say one at some point. She left the home and left her own 13-year-old in charge. During that time, deputies say the dogs forced their way into the room the child was in and attacked the baby for an unknown reason. The sheriff's office says the team tried to protect the baby, but we're told that there was a struggle given the dogs were XL bullies, a pit bull mix. That's a very strong breed of dog. Sheriff Javier Salazar says Rodriguez is in custody, but not cooperating with detectives. Meanwhile, dog attacks have been a growing concern in our area as we continue to see deadly and life-threatening injuries. We've covered two in the last few days, one on Friday night and now this latest one yesterday. Now, within the city of San Antonio, Animal Care Services Interim Director Michael Shannon says many cases are easily preventable. That's why he says his department is trying to hold animal owners accountable with citations. Um, we've had several dog bites uh, recently and it's totally preventable. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, irresponsible pet owners just letting their dogs loose and not keeping them restrained and, and what that creates is a dangerous situation in neighborhoods. ACS has several resources to print attempt prevent attacks from happening. That includes spaying and neutering your animals, as well as making sure that they are properly restrained or on a leash. We've got links and resources for you available at ksat.com. For now, Devin Karp, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. Two murders in the same public housing complex last week, and residents there are still shaken about it. Now, it started on Tuesday at the Victoria Plaza Apartments on Barretta Street. A man was found dead during a welfare check, and then on Friday, another man's body was discovered. San Antonio police said the 59-year-old Nick Martinez was the man found on Tuesday. He died from a sharp force injury. On Friday, 52-year-old Donald Sterling was found with a gunshot wound to the head. This all happening at a complex intended for seniors and people with disabilities. We deserve also um, the, the comforts of, of having a roof over our head, being able to reside in a safe place. That neighbor you just heard from right there says that she is encouraged, though, by the on-site security at the complex since the murders happened. Opportunity Homes San Antonio did send out a statement saying that they are actively assessing security measures at Victoria Plaza. And in some morning headlines, Oklahoma's top education official is facing pushback from some people after seeking to purchase 55,000 Bibles for public schools. Oklahoma Superintendent Ryan Walters has asked that the Bibles each contain the Declaration of Independence and U.S. Constitution. The request is part of Walters' ongoing efforts to require Bibles in every classroom, which has been met with resistance by some of Oklahoma's largest school districts. The school's order reportedly changed yesterday to say that the supplier must provide a different Bible, though. There's also word that the ACLU and Americans United plan to challenge Oklahoma's Bible curriculum plans. Panera Bread has reached the first settlement among several wrongful death lawsuits regarding one of its now discontinued charged lemonade drinks. The lawyer representing the family of Sarah Katz told USA Today a deal was made but could not provide specifics. In 2022, you will remember that the 21-year-old Katz collapsed hours after having some of the charged lemonade and later died in an area hospital. Katz was diagnosed with a heart issue as child and avoided energy drinks and then however she just didn't realize that the charged lemonade had a high caffeine content a panera spokesperson released a statement to usa today saying quote our hearts go out to the family 
All right, well, back here at home, the debate over the proposed new Mission Stadium. You see that plot of land right there behind me continues this morning. This is a 2.3 acre piece of land on Camarón Street near San Pedro Creek Park and West Martin Street, and it is just one point of contention for neighbors out there. The San Antonio Independent School District says that there is still no decision on whether it will sell the property to the downtown development group known as Weston Urban. They, along with the San Antonio Missions Ownership Group, are hoping to move the baseball stadium to the downtown area again to that plot of land right there. SAISD held a town hall last night where lots of frustrated neighbors shared their thoughts about the possible sale. Western Urban owns the majority of downtown property already. We deserve to be a part of a district that's going to stand up for them and their family against developers and wealthy individuals. While a handful of neighbors do support moving that stadium to the downtown area, SAISD tells us that they have not yet agreed to a memorandum of understanding, also known as an MOU, or any contract to sell the Cameroon Street property at this time. However, the city has approved a formal non-binding agreement outlining tentative financing, development, construction, and operations. The county will be considering a MOU similar to the city's later today. Time now, 540. We're looking at 68 degrees outside. All right, feeling good outside on a Tuesday morning. Well, we have some big changes coming soon to the Mega Millions Lottery. Why you could be able to win a little bit more cash a little bit more often. Whoop, whoop. Taking a lot of look outside. San Antonio, how y'all doing? Time to wake up. You hear me say it every day. Get on up. Get your day started. We're here with GMSA. Of course, we got so much more to get to with more of our jam-packed show. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. While a lot of people, including this guy right here, are saying it's about time on this one, HEB announcing that they're bringing tap to pay to its stores. The easy way to pay system has long been available almost everywhere except HEB for years. So yes, yeah, starting now, some HEBs in San Antonio will accept tap to pay from cards and digital wallets at its cash registers, self-checkout lanes, and pharmacies. So this is going to take about a week for all the HEBs in the area to to roll out this new feature. We could wait another week. It's taken us years to get here. However, <laughs> HB gas stations, uh, they're not going to be doing accepting uh, tap to pay. So uh, we'll see if that changes. Is that when you get the card and you barely touch and it's like, yes. ding, ding, you know, I did ding. that accidentally one time oh, and I was no. like, oh my God, did it just take it? And they were just like, yes, yeah, technology. Okay. <laughs> okay. The cost of Mega Millions lottery ticket is increasing from $2 to five. I know that sounds like, oh my God, it's expensive. But in April, several changes are coming to the famous Mega Millions game with a $5 ticket. Mega Millions says that you will have a greater chance to win the jackpot. Bigger jackpots will be available more often and will grow faster. There will also be a multiplier on every play and there are no break even prizes. That means that if you win something, you should be able to win more than just the cost of the ticket. So mm. I remember first when we were talking about mm -hmm. this, the first headline was right. like tickets right. is going up and I was just like $3. Oh. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, but now <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe, just maybe, this is maybe. our year. Yeah, I'm not a lucky person when it comes to that anyway. So. <laughs> Don't count yourself short, RJ. Come on now. Yeah. Okay, 545, it is 68 degrees outside. Hey, speaking of being lucky, we're going to tell you how you can win some tickets to the Clásico Regio, which is set for this coming Saturday at the Alamo Dome. Tigres Rayados, let's go. Mm -hmm. Taking a look at Trans Guide right now. Things are looking decent across San Antonio. Of course, your commute looks smoothly so far. We'll be Checking in with Text Dot and Chance Guide to make sure that commute continues to be smooth throughout your morning. On game day, you see our strength, but we see yours too. We see the strength it takes to get screened, facing your fears while still having hope, knowing that even with great strength, there are some battles best fought with people by your side. Getting screened is the first step. Millions of noses are ghosted by their plugins. New Airwick Advanced, our groundbreaking plugin that pulses scent for staying power up to 60 days, plus a fragrance boost button. Our noses won't be ignored again. Can Nariva support your brain health? Mary, Janet, hey. Eddie, no, Fraser, Frank. Frank? Fred, how are you? Fred. Support up to seven brain health indicators, including memory. When you need to remember, remember Nariva. 
All right, 550 right now. We want you to get your phone out right now and scan that QR code that you see on your screen. That's because we're hosting a big sweepstakes for KSAT insiders to win tickets to the Clásico Regio that is set for this Saturday inside the Alamo Dome. This, of course, one of the biggest rivalries in soccer in Mexico, pitting Monterrey's two teams, Tigres and Rayados. And our insiders, you can enter the chance to win four tickets to the game. But again, you got to be an insider. You know it. It's in the name. It's easy to sign up though. You all you need is your email address. The tweet stakes is now open and it runs until October the 9th. Okay, so that's tomorrow. Yes. yes. Tomorrow. That's the last day. Oh you gotta get you gotta get in there. Yes. It's already October the 9th. Look at that. <laughs> there we go. 1604 Lookout Road. Traffic looking pretty good. 281 at Hildebrand. Same situation there as well for all of my folks out there by UIW. Shout out to you folks out there. And uh, again, and no major incidents to let you know about right now. So let's go in and check in with Mia in for the one and only Justin today. Yes, good morning. And of course, while we are quiet here in San Antonio, and that will continue to be the case, not just this afternoon, but over the next several days, the big story in the weather world nationally, of course, is Hurricane Milton. As of the 4 a.m. update, it is a high-end Category 4 storm. Winds sustained at 155 miles per hour, the center of the system just to the north of the northern coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula. This is going to continue to work its way farther up to the northeast over the next couple of days potentially weakening ever so slightly before approaching the Sunshine State. It is still expected to make landfall as a major hurricane late tomorrow night and into early Thursday near the Tampa Bay area. Then it crosses over the Florida Peninsula and moves out into the western Atlantic by Thursday evening. But storm surge potentially peaking upwards of 10 to 15 feet possible near Tampa Bay, stretching down to Fort Myers. Rainfall totals upwards of 5 to 10 inches localized higher certainly will be a possibility of course with the high winds on top of all of that here's a look at the watches and warnings in place hurricane warnings for Tampa Sarasota tropical storm warnings down towards the Florida Keys that transitions to watches on the east side of the state of Florida we of course will continue to keep you posted on additional developments with Milton over the next few days if you have friends and family out that way but for now here in San Antonio quite the opposite not too bad out there upper 60s right around 70 degrees Degrees to kickstart this Tuesday, especially on the south side of Bear County. Good morning to you folks up in Canyon Lake. 67 degrees at 66 in Floresville. 60 on the dot over there in Bandera. Once the sun comes up today, we are going to see plenty of it. 88 degrees expected around lunchtime. High temperatures reaching for the low to mid 90s across south central Texas. We've got a forecast high right around 95 in the Alamo City. It'll be 93 in Bulverde, 92 in Comfort, 95 out west for places like Hondo, Sabinal, as well as Uvalde. Now looking ahead, record challenging warmth expected into tomorrow yet again as well, and still 90s into the upcoming weekend. But notice your low temperatures a little bit better. We're expecting a drop in humidity levels once again over the next few days. Yes, that dry air still helps us to warm up pretty efficiently into the afternoon, especially with all of that sunshine. But on the flip side of things, it will make for some cooler and pleasant mornings and even evenings too after the sun goes down. Not too bad out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even under the shade, it's not too bad. You get a little bit of a breeze yeah. and stuff. That like low that. humidity yeah. is really the, the, the key change the key. there, so that's going to be nice. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mia. 554 right now, 68 degrees outside. So we now know the winners of the International Wine Competition for the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. We'll reveal the grand champion and where you can try the winning wine. All right, coming up on 557, well, here's something for y'all to whine about, but uh, this is a good thing here. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo announced the winners of the International Wine Competition. Over 340 wineries from around the world participated, and 37 of those were from right here in the state of Texas. Represent seven judges sampled over 1,000 entries. Wow. And the grand champion was a 2021 wine by, what is that? I, Laird. Laird, okay, yes. a family estate. I'm not a wine person, so I don't really know the names that well. About to <laughs> Most of these wines will be available to try at your nearest HEB during rodeo season in February. 
When you try one, why they, they didn't get tips or anything? I was going to say, how do you get that job, being the judge? For <laughs> get, I think you got to spit it out or something. I don't know. Y'all teach a little us. Swish, yeah, a little <laughs> swish of the glass. Right in there. All right, still to come at 6 o'clock, our coverage continues on the Missions Ballpark plans near downtown. We're going to tell you what frustrated neighbors are having to say about a potential new stadium in that area. And up next, we're tracking Hurricane Milton as it takes aim at Florida. What's being done there ahead of the storm's arrival?